Hi guys and welcome to this second tutorial on mappings where we'll be going through some more examples to hopefully further your understanding on mappings. Okay, so we're asked to determine the type of mapping for the following mappings. Starting with question one, we're given the equation y is equal to one over x. So I'm gonna give you a few moments to pause the video to have a go at this and when you come back, I'll show you the solution. Welcome back guys, let's have a look at the solution. So the easiest way to figure out the type of mapping for the equation y is equal to one over x is by visualizing, by drawing its graph. So this is how the graph looks. And if we use the horizontal line test, you should be able to see that for each line you draw, there's only one point of intersection between that line you've just drawn and the curve. So therefore, this is a one-to-one -one mapping. Let's have a look at the next question. What mapping do we have for y is equal to sine of theta? So again, I'm gonna pause the video to give you a few moments to try this one out. And when you come back, we're gonna have a look at the solution. Okay guys, welcome back. Let's have a look at the solution. So again, the easiest way to determine the type of mapping for the equation y is equal to sine of theta is to draw its graph. And this is how the graph of sine of theta looks. Now, if we use the horizontal line test again, this time you should be able to see that for each line that you draw, there is more than one point of intersection between the line you've just drawn and the curve, okay? So this is an example of a many to one mapping. Let's have a look at the next question. So here we have what's called a piecewise mapping, which gives us the equation six minus three X for all values of X strictly less than one and gives us the equation X squared plus three for all values of X greater than or equal to one. So I'm gonna give you guys a few moments to pause the video and try to figure out what type of mapping this is. And when you come back, I'll show you the solution. Welcome back guys. I hope you had a decent attempt to that question and let's go through the solution. Okay, now, as we mentioned, earlier that this is a piecewise mapping, I would strongly suggest that you draw the graph to identify the type of mapping. Okay, so let's start off by drawing the graph of y is equal to six minus three x for all values of x less than one. So in order to draw this piece of the mapping, I'd first of all start by drawing the graph of y is equal to six minus three x for all values of x. I then adjust the graph to make sure that it satisfies this inequality. Let's have a look at it. Okay, so here's a sketch of the graph of y is equal to six minus three x for all values of x. Now, as you can see, this is a backward sloping straight line because we have a negative gradient. The y-intercept would be equal to six and the x-intercept which is the value of x when the equation y is equal to zero, well, that would be equal to two. Now, for the purposes of this exercise, I haven't written down the points of intersection between the graph and the corner axes. However, you should generally do this. So now we've drawn the graph for all values of x. Remembering that we're looking at the graph for all values of x less than one, all we need to do is adjust the graph by removing the part of the graph where x is greater than or equal to one. So this line here represents the equation y is equal to six minus three x for all values of x less than one. Now we need to take note of the inequality and note that this is a strict inequality. And we represent that on a graph by drawing an open circle, okay? So we've now drawn this piece of the mapping. So now let's draw this piece of the mapping using the same method. 
So, we'd start off by drawing the graph of x squared plus 3 for all values of x. And this is how it would look. The y-intersect, in this case, would be equal to 3. We would then adjust the graph by removing the part which does not satisfy this inequality, leaving us with x squared plus 3 for all values of x which are greater than or equal to 1. Now, in this case, note that we have a non-strict inequality and we represent non-strict inequalities on graphs by using a closed circle. So we've now completed the drawing of this piecewise mapping. Now by putting this graph under the horizontal line test, you should be able to see that there is more than one point of intersection between the horizontal line we've just drawn and the graphs. Now we can't make our conclusion just yet because there's a region of this graph that still needs examining. And in general, you should always be looking to conduct both the horizontal and the vertical line test. Now which region am I talking about? Now looking at this region, it looks as though if we draw a vertical line through this point x is equal to 1, that we would get two points of intersection. And that would mean that this is a many-to-many -many mapping. Now this is not the case because if you remember we had a strict inequality here so x cannot be equal to 1 for the equation 6 minus 3x. However x can be equal to 1 for the equation x squared plus 3. So therefore we only get one output of y when we substitute x is equal to 1 into this piecewise mapping. And the output we get is 4, which you can find by subbing x is equal to 1 into the equation x squared plus 3, giving you 1 squared plus 3, which is equal to 4. So the point I'm trying to make here is that, firstly, you should always be looking to conduct both the horizontal and the vertical line test when you are trying to figure out the type of mapping. The other point I'm trying to make is that if you do draw a horizontal or a vertical line which goes through an open circle, this does not count as a point of intersection. So by what we see from the horizontal line test, it follows that this is a many to one mapping. Let's have a look at the last example. So determine the type of mapping for the equation x squared plus 10x plus y squared minus 8y minus 40 is equal to zero. So I'm gonna give you a few moments to pause the video and have a go at this. And when you come back, I'll show you the solution. Welcome back guys. Now looking at this equation, it would appear as quite difficult to draw the graph of. However, we can draw its graph if we're able to rewrite this equation into a form that we're more familiar with. And we can do that by completing the square. Okay, so completing the square of the x terms, we get the expression x plus 5 all squared minus 25. And completing the square of the y terms, we get the expression y minus 4 all squared minus 16. And the minus 40 just comes down from the previous equation. If we evaluate the remaining constant terms, minus 25 minus 16 minus 40 is equal to minus 81. If we add 81 to both sides, we get this final equation, x plus 5 all squared plus y minus 4 all squared is equal to 81, which is the equation of a circle centered at the point negative 5, 4 with a radius of 9. And we see that when we draw a horizontal and vertical line, there is two points of intersection between the horizontal line and the circle. But there is also two points of intersection between the vertical line and the circle. And therefore, this is a many-to-many -many mapping. I hope that tutorial was useful for you. In the next tutorial, we'll be looking at the similarity and differences between functions and mappings. Until then, keep up the good work and I'll see you soon. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.